Hi everyone, it's been a while since I've done a Baldur's Beautiful blog, so here I am. And I'm here today because of a piece of paper that I got in the mail from my gynecologist. And it's been fucking with my head all day because it had the words atypical cells of undetermined origin. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. Apparently they don't know either. But my head has been spinning since then. And, and it got me thinking about this, this, uh, this thing called survivorship. Cancer survivorship. And what that is. Nobody really tells you what that means or what it is or how you actually go about it. But, uh, I don't know, it's supposed to be you're in remission, so now back to your regularly scheduled life. Or something. <laughs> but that's just not really how it is for survivors. Nothing is ever normal again, even a simple, quote-unquote simple gynecological test. So, yeah, I just started thinking about it. This cancer thing, and you move on, and you... You know, I moved on. I have this life. I'm alive. And But cancer is a kind of a constant companion. And if it's, it's either like a jacket that you wear every day, or, you know, maybe it's a, a shadow or a flicker in the distance. But either way, it's, you know, it's always there. And sometimes that kind of thing can be, you know, really beautiful and profound because I'm alive and I'm here and I survived. And sometimes, well, the words atypical cells on a piece of paper can send me into a tailspin. And it shatters that veil of freedom and wellness that 12 years of clear tests uh, made me comfortable and feeling after this time. So it's fucking scary. So, I don't know. This piece of paper just it hit me like a Mack truck. Straight onto my sternum. And, I don't know, maybe it's nothing. Maybe I don't have to worry. But this is the part of survivorship. This is the part that they don't tell you about, or they can't tell you about it because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about and they haven't been through it. I don't know. You only learn it by living it. But it's the part that means I don't have the luxury of saying I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. I don't have the luxury of being okay with come back in three months and take the test again and just being okay with that. That's a luxury. And Instead, I get to go through all this mental and emotional contortionism that comes with a not clear test result of any kind. You know, what should I do? What should I not do? What did I woulda, coulda, shoulda? What's going to happen? Then also the self-flagellation, the stuff of like, well, I haven't been very vigilant about my diet in the last couple of years. I haven't done as much yoga or meditation. I haven't done it enough. You know, whatever. Somehow I'm responsible, maybe again, for this thing that might or might not be happening in my body. And I just suddenly this feeling of total loss of control, which we don't have anyway, but still... It's been a while for me since I've had to even deal with this kind of feeling. And uh, it just all came rushing back, just seeing those words. And I had a very palpable memory of what it feels like to have my entire life fall apart. Everything changing in an instant. To have everything that I knew to be true become this abstract stream of persistent not knowingness again. It's 
It's like being in a raft in the middle of the ocean and there's no sight of land suddenly. And I'm sharing this, I guess, because it's just not happened to me in so long that I just, I seem to get comfortable in the idea that I was cancer free and that's, a, that, and that's it for me. I'm okay. But this is part of it too. This is part of the cancer journey is that you can be okay and then suddenly not okay and then you have to deal with it. All right, at the moment I'm not having a good time. And my doctor said it's probably nothing, but I can't just rest in that and that scares me. This piece of paper, it's like a time machine and I'm back to the year 2000. And nothing feels safe all of a sudden. And I know what all that feels like, but I also know what it feels like to have so much love and support around me. I know what it feels like to have a vision and a purpose in my life. And I know what it feels like to have gone through what I went through and found so much empowerment and beauty and a sense of self in that experience that is ultimately really just a profoundly shitty, fucked up experience. <laughs> but from that came Bald is Beautiful, right? So here I am with one little pap smear gone awry and I'm scared all over again. So I guess I'm, I wanna tell myself that it, it is okay and that everything will be okay. My doctor understands my history and so instead of three months, he said I can come back in in two months, <laughs> take the test again. But, um, yeah, I have a couple months to figure out how to stay calm and carry on <laughs> and keep my mind from totally spinning out. But, um, yeah, I guess it also makes me feel very grateful and wanted to say thank you, as always, to everyone in my life who's just shown me such love and support and unconditional love and I'm so grateful for that and grateful for all the support in this life that I've chosen to do this bald this beautiful thing which is just this wacky idea that I am doing <laughs> and um, yeah figure out how to just make it okay just surf ride these waves here which just keep coming and going <laughs> um, here, I'm going to try and say it. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Is that convincing? <sighs> We're all okay. In the good times and the bad times. And I know that. And I'm just riding this little ride that this piece of paper brought into my life today. So... Thanks for riding with me. Bald is beautiful. Peace out.